In this video, we're going to go over some more integration strategies, some various strategies to use. Um, let's jump right in. The first one we're going to talk about is going to be the integral. Um, I've got of dx over e to the x plus e to the negative x. Now, remember, one thing to think about when you're working with these problems is I can't integrate each one separately because I've got a um, plus or minus sort of in the fraction or in the denominator of, a, of our fraction here. So we're going to have to try to manipulate this in a different way. Um, easiest way to do that is actually to rewrite this so I can simplify it algebraically. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this as, I'm going to write this as a 1 over e to the x plus 1 over e to the x, and I'll just leave that dx over here on the side. This e to the negative x here that we have is what is allowed to be rewritten. Oh, sorry about that. That e to the negative x is what can be rewritten as the 1 over e to the x, so that's worthwhile to notice with that. Um, all right, let's go ahead and see what we can do uh, a little bit farther to manipulate that. The next thing I'm going to do is simplify this one more time to get rid of the fraction. So I'm going to go ahead and times this by e to the x, top and bottom, to simplify this one more. All right, let's see what that's going to become. Now, this is going to be the integral of, now I have e to the x on top. But when I multiply through this e to the x on the bottom, e to the x times e to the x is going to become e to the 2x, and then plus, and then and then I'm going to go ahead, sorry about that, and then I'm going to go ahead and have that plus, there it is, 1 over e to the x times e to the x will just simply become 1 dx. All right, so a little bit easier. All right, the next thing I'm going to do to ma manipulate this one step farther is I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this one more time to make it a little bit easier for ourselves. I will write that as a e to the x on top, and then e to the 2x, I'm actually going to write that as e to the x squared. You might reach a point where you skip writing it that way, but this is just going to be a way to help us visualize what we've got going on. So then I can do a u sub. So if I were to let my u be e to the x, then du, the derivative of e to the x, is just simply e to the x. So that entire e to the x dx can now be replaced with a du, right? It'll turn it into just simply a du. So this will become the integral of now I just have a du, and then I have a u squared plus 1, because instead of an e to the x squared, that got replaced with the u, which is going to be a little bit more straightforward. All right, and then we can think about this again one more time um, in terms of simplifying things. You might have this one just memorized, and that's good to know, and that's fine. Or you can go back and think about what you know about derivatives. We do know that the derivative of arctangent is the 1 over um, 1 plus x squared or u squared or whatever your argument is. So the antiderivative here is just going to be our arctangent of u. This is indefinite, so we have a plus c. So then in this case, that will be our arctangent of our u was e to the x plus c. Uh, all right, pretty straightforward. Um, so again, that was just an algebraic manipulation until you can get to a point that you can use a u substitution. All right, let's try another one, see what we can do. Um, another one, this is going to be some trig identities and maybe some trig, substitu uh, trig uh, u substitution and see if we can manipulate this one. Um, one more time, I'm going to actually simplify it algebraically first. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and break up the fraction. So I'm going to break up the fraction, and this is going to become... Oops, the integral, there we go. So cosine divided by secant. Well, we do know that secant is 1 over cosine. So cosine divided by secant can actually be written as, now I'll have two cosines on top, so cosine squared. All right, and then plus, and then sine cubed divided by secant. Again, secant we know is 1 over cosine. So to get rid of that fraction, I can just write that simply as cosine instead of 1 over 1 over cosine. Okay, and then, oops, there we go, the sine cubed right next to that, sine cubed of x. Good, dx, perfect. All right, so now let's see what we can do uh, from there. So in order to simplify this one step farther, there's a couple of different things that you can do for these ones. I'm going to actually break this up into two different integrals. Uh, so just so that you can see what's going on here, simplify things again uh, one, one step at a time. Um, I'm going to break that up now instead of one integral. So we'll have cosine squared of x dx plus, and then I have the integral of cosine of x 
times sine cubed of x dx. All right, and then we'll go ahead and do each one of those separately. For the cosine squared, it's actually um, a nice little trick. And this is just a trig identity. Cosine squared is the trig identity. It can turn into a 1 plus cosine of 2x divided by 2. So that's what cosine squared of x, that's a trig identity there, that half angle formula. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do, deal with that guy for just a second. Um, I'm going to finish that integration. I'm going to come back to the second piece here in just a second. So let me move to the next page to work on that one that we had. We had the integral of 1 plus sorry, cosine of 2x. There we go. Cosine of 2x divided by 2 dx. All right, and then what I'm going to do for that one is break up that fraction again. Or you might even think of it instead as taking out that 1 half as a constant multiple. So 1 plus cosine of 2x dx. All right, and then we can continue on with that integration. So that'll become a 1 half. The integral of 1 is just x plus, and then the integral of cosine is sine of 2x. But don't forget to divide by that constant multiple. All right, and then plus c. Perfect. Excellent. So that was just that first integral. If you remember, we did still have the second piece. So let's go back a page and look at that second piece. So that second piece that we had was this cosine of x times sine cubed of x. That one's going to just take a little bit more of a manipulation. So for this one, it's actually going to be a u sub. So I would let my u be sine of x because then du the derivative of sine is cosine of x. So then that entire cosine of x and dx can just be turned into a du. So then this will become the integral of just simply u cubed du. All right, so let's move all that on to the next page so we don't forget to add that on to our first integral for this problem. So then that will turn into, I had a plus, I had an integral of a u cubed du. So let's go ahead and finish that one that I have over here. All right, easy enough. The integral there for u cubed is going to be u to the fourth over 4. Okay, easy enough. But our u, going back to remember what my u really was, it was sine of x. So then this will become plus a sine to the fourth of x over 4 plus c. And when you're adding two, you broke up one integral up into two integrals, the final answer does only need 1 plus c. You don't need it for both of them. So then this would be our final answer, 4. And that was the answer for the original problem uh, that we had over here, which was the integral of cosine x plus sine cubed over secant. Excellent. Ta-da! All right, let's see if we can do another one here. Let's do one more trig. Um, trig identity. This, this one will use a trig identity as well. This one, if you notice, is actually written wrong to begin with, so I apologize. There should be a dx there for that integral. All right, let's go ahead and integrate this one. Again, I can't integrate each one separately because I've got a plus or minus um, on the denominator of that fraction, so it's definitely not something that I can do each one separately. It's within a fraction. Let's go ahead and do uh, algebraic manipulation. In this case, I'm actually going to choose to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate sine of x minus 1. All right, and that sine of x minus 1, top and bottom, it's going to be top and bottom there, <coughs> excuse me, that's going to be able to simplify our integral. So then I'm going to have a sine of x minus 1. All right, so we'll have that sine of x minus 1 on top. And then on bottom, what we're going to have is, if you think about this, it's actually a sine of x plus 1 times a sine of x minus 1, which if you were to FOIL that out or distribute that through, that would simplify into a sine of x minus 1 divided by a sine squared of x minus 1. After we went through distributed, combined like terms, that's what we would end up with, okay? Then I'm going to go ahead and use another trig identity, all right? So we do know the main trig identity we all know and love, sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x equals, you got it, 1. All right, so then what I have is I have a sine squared of x minus 1. So what I'm going to actually try to do is manipulate this trig identity. That'll become a sine squared of x minus 1. If I were to manipulate 
the cosine squared to the other side of the equal sign, it's actually going to be a negative cosine squared. So then that means that on the denominator, what I now am going to have is a negative cosine squared. So let's, let's see, write that out and see what we can get. This will become the integral of sine of x minus 1 divided by negative cosine squared of x dx. Now I have just one thing on bottom. So I can break up the fraction. I'm going to go over and rewrite this and break up that fraction. This will become the integral of negative sine of x over cosine squared of x. And then plus, because the two negatives will cancel when I break up that fraction, 1 over cosine squared of x dx. Now I can look at this as two separate fractions. And each one separately, we can do some trig identities to simplify it. So I'm going to rewrite this one more time on the next page so that we can have a little bit more space. So I have <clears throat> the integral of, and I had negative sine of x divided by cosine squared of x plus 1 divided by cosine squared of x dx. Let's make sure I have that right. It looks like I got the negatives in the right spot. Okay, now I'm going to do this. Um, each fraction, simplify it. What's sine divided by cosine? It's tangent, right? So negative sine divided by cosine is tangent. But this one has another cosine on bottom. When another cosine on bottom is like a 1 over cosine, which is really just secant. Good, good. And then plus 1 over cosine squared, we know again is secant, but this one's squared. Good, dx. Then you can integrate each one of these. What's the antiderivative of tangent times secant? Well, isn't that the same thing as secant times tangent? And the integral of secant tangent is just secant of x because the derivative of secant of x is tangent of x. Good, good. Plus, the next one, the integral of secant squared is going to be tangent of x because the derivative of tangent is secant squared. Perfect. Plus c. Ta-da! Excellent. There we go. All right, let's do one more for this video, one more strategy, one more trig identity that we're going to use for this problem as well. So I've got the integral of 3 sine of x times sine of 2x dx. This one's a little bit trickier. A simple use of is not going to work very well because if you notice in my problem, the argument of the two different trig functions is different. So it's not going to be a simple plug one trig function into another. We're actually going to have to manipulate this one one step farther, which we can do. We've got a lot of trig identities. One of the trig identities that we know is sine of 2x is equal to 2 times sine of x cosine of x. That's a very easy way to manipulate that sine of 2x to have trig functions with a smaller argument. So this one's going to be used pretty commonly. All right, and then it's actually going to be not too bad. So I'll have the integral of 3 sine of x times, and then it looks like I have times 2 sine of x cosine of x dx. Oh, then we just have to manipulate it one more time, simplify, if you will. So this will become the integral of now 3 times 2, 6. Sine times sine is now going to be a sine squared of x, and then I have a cosine of x dx. Now this should look pretty familiar in comparison to one we did not too long ago. This one I can just do a simple u sub for. So what would I let my u be here? Your u is going to be just that sine of x, and then my du would be cosine of x dx, and again, that way that entire cosine of x dx can now just be replaced with a du. So then this integral will become the integral of 6u squared du, right? Because instead of sine squared, I had a u squared. Perfect. All right, let me rewrite that so we can finish that. All right, so I have the integral of 6u squared du. All right, now it's pretty straightforward. 6u cubed over 3 plus c. I'm going to simplify that to just be a 2u cubed plus c. But then again, this was an indefinite integral. We need to go back and figure out what my u was. My u was sine of x here. So then that would mean that this will become 2 sine cubed of x plus c. Ta-da!